Sovereign and mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we welcome you this morning to join us as we minister to you this morning. It's so good that you join us on the special morning of the 2nd of August 2020, this beautiful Sunday morning, the Lord's Day. We welcome all our fellow uh, servants of God from all over the nations of the world, uh, to our beloved United in Christ, the sons of the prophet, and to the household, Christ Kingdom Ministries. We're missing you guys. We trust in God that God will soon allow us that we can gather in the sanctuary of the Lord, that we can have our corporate worship and our corporate praise. And I pray this morning as the servants of God will share the word of the Lord and we enter into worship. And as we prepare for communion, I trust this day that you'll be connected to the end and receive the blessing in full. We pray today that the blessing of the Lord will be your portion. Open your hearts this morning and give the Lord your best. And I really believe today there will be an open heaven over your home and the presence of God will fill your place. Once again, we are privileged for you to join us and to you, beloved, just a reminder with this COVID-19 pandemic, I want you to be cautious, not for us to be afraid, but I want you to be careful. Take the necessary precautions because it is real. But I want you to join us. Everyone across the nations now are praying that this pandemic will lift. And I pray, give your time in in prayer and let the Lord break this curse that we can come back into fellowship in the house of the Lord. As we continue now, let us join together in prayer as we have Prophet Clyde that will lead us in prayer. Come, let us pray. Father, we give you glory today. For even as we woke up this morning and looked in the mirror, we believe we are alive. We are still standing. Yes. That the Lord our God has come before us. We are washed in the blood. Yes. We have breath. The enemy tried to rob us of our marriages. We are standing. Amen. He tried to rob us of our finances. We are standing. Yes. He tried to rob us of our health. He tried to rob us of all these things. Yes. But we are standing in the presence of Amen. God. Amen. And we will never leave this plow, Yahweh, we today. Yes. We say out loud in the presence of the angels of heaven that we will not put our hands or take our hands of this plow. We will stand strong. We will live and not die. Yes. We will stand in the glory of Christ. We will shake and move in Him. We have our being. Yes. We will not let everything around us, this news, this false news, these rumors, these messages, keep us from acknowledging who is our God. Yes. We will not look to any other God in this season. We will not look to any other man in this season. We will lift up our hands. We will look to heaven and say, Here I am, Lord, your servant ready to serve you mm. in the kingdom. And yes, today Lord. I declare, even as you get ready for the word, that this is cut through, it'll cut through, it'll cut through. I hear the Holy Ghost speaking so strongly this morning that it's actually confusing my words. It's going to cut through like a knife to the atmosphere that's holding you back this morning. Mm -hmm. And you will never be the same. I know you've heard it before, you'll never be the same. But each word that comes forth is life changing. Yes. And today I declare under heaven that this is a life changing word. And your whole being is about to be shifted in Jesus' name. Amen. Family of Christ today, let's get ready to get into worship. And then get ready, take your pens, your books out, get ready to record as we welcome the servant of God. What a great message that will shift you this morning. Pastor Arvin Magan, and we give God the glory for eight is completion, the day of new beginnings. That it's been completed, and we're looking forward for something new in this eight month in Jesus' name. So get ready, avail yourself, put down what you're doing, and get ready for what God is about to do. Amen.
Greetings in a mighty name of our Lord and Savior this morning and wonderful that you could connect with us online and that we have the opportunity to come into your homes wherever you might be and we know and I know that you are a people that are blessed and highly favored Amen. the healed of the Lord Amen. he has kept you and he has protected you so we bless you this morning, the 2nd of August. And as the prophet has said, this new month, the 8th month of this calendar year, 2020, 8 represents new beginnings. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm pregnant with expectation Amen. of what the Lord has already prepared for us already prepared for you and I. It will come forth. It shall come forth. Because He promises His word. For me personally, this eight month is special to me. Special because many years ago, in the month of August, in this eight month, I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I received Him as my Lord. I got born again and got saved. So it's special for me. Mm. Also in this eight month, I entered into a covenant of marriage. Like I did in the covenant of him and I. Covenant of salvation. And I entered into a covenant of marriage in this eight month. Mm. So it's really special for me. But more special of the covenants that I have entered into. The covenants that you have entered into. When you come into covenant with Him, it's the highest level of covenant. Yeah. And the second level of covenant is obviously your marriage to your spouse. And you might say in this time that you're in great expectancy, even though we're coming into and into this peak of the pandemic here in South Africa. How can you say that you're in expectancy of things that God has prepared for you and I? I understand the reality of the pandemic as it's getting closer and closer with people we know, family, loved ones, might have passed on because of this COVID-19. But I want to encourage you today. Don't let fear grip you. And even as I encourage you, you're alive. Amen. So thank God for that. Yeah. Amen. So stay focused in Him. Stay focused on His Word and His promises. Stay focused on that. As you are alive, remain in faith. Believe that you have received your healing. I believe I've received. I'm the healer of the Lord. Amen. I believe I've received. That's what the Word says. Why do I believe? Why do I encourage you to continue to believe? So as I was meditating and preparing my heart for this time that we're going to spend together, the Lord reminded me of this eight month of entering into covenant with Him. Mm -hmm. As He reminded me, as I entered into covenant with me, it's a new covenant. That new covenant has never been broken to date. Yeah. It will never be broken ever. Amen. Because the fact is, and the word says that it cannot be broken. The covenant that you and I made with him can never be broken. As long as you remain obedient, remain obedient, remain committed to him. That he always remains to be your Lord and your Savior. He will never break that covenant. When I look at the word in Psalm 89, verse 34, it says, My covenant I will not break. Go on. My covenant I will not break. And he goes on to say, Nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Hallelujah. 
You see, there's no shades of gray yeah. when it comes to the Word of God. Amen. It's precise. It's accurate. Yeah. Because it's designed to fulfill a purpose, a divine purpose for you and I. Amen. And that's why he says that my covenant, which is his word, I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Because Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to be void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And this is what I love. And he says, it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So as you speak his word, and as the angels carry forth his word, it shall prosper in the thing for which it was sent. Is it healing? Is it restoration? Is it your finances? Supernatural debt cancellation? Is it your marriage? Whatever it might be, as the word has gone forth, it shall prosper in the thing you send it for. Because you are the prophet of your own lives. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, he says, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word that's written, and as you speak it, you shall not live by bread alone. But every word and every promise as you continue to stand in faith. Friends and family, this covenant is no ordinary covenant. It's not an agreement as we have in the world today. Because agreements get broken. Agreements go to court to be challenged. But the covenant cannot be challenged. Mm. Cannot be broken. Yes. Cannot even get to the courts of law. Yeah. Because that covenant is sealed by the blood of the Lamb. That covenant is a blood covenant. It's a blood covenant. And when we look at the word in Ephesians chapter 2, picking up from verse 11, therefore remember. That you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ. And that's where we were before we became born again. We were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers, strangers from the covenants of promise, mm. having no hope. And without God in the world. And so true it has been. That those that might be hearing my voice this morning. And do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But we've been there. That we were strangers of the covenant of promise. Yeah. Having no hope. Mm -hmm. Having no destiny. Having no desire to live. Because we were without God. But it goes on in verse 13, but now, in Christ Jesus, you were once far, were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ, Amen. by the shedding of the blood of Christ. You were redeemed and have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Here's the good news. But let me bring you the great news. There is no curse in the blood covenant. And in the Old Testament, we, we know under the law, the blood was sprinkled to cover the sins. Yeah. But in the new covenant that you and I are in, the blood covenant, it was shed to remove Hallelujah. and wash away your sins. It has been completely wiped out. Thank you, Jesus. A clean slate. So I want to encourage you. Don't ever look back and try to remember your past sins. The truth is, I can't remember that. 
Because Jesus remembers it no more. That's right. Jesus remembers it no more. If Jesus does not remember it, why do you have to remember it? I don't want to remember it. That old person in me has died. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I have a new covenant with him. And that's why when you look at the word in Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Wow, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. You know, when I read that scripture, I thought of myself before I became born again. Because I was unrighteous. I was a sinner. That's right. I got involved in lawless deeds before I got born again. But thank God he remembers it no more. Thank you, Jesus. Because His blood has cleansed me. Amen. His blood has washed me and made me whiter than snow. And so we need to thank Him for His grace and His mercy. Thank Him for His grace and mercy to where He's brought us to. And I look at the word in Galatians chapter 3, picking up from verse 13 onwards. And maybe I'll just pick up earlier from where we are. In verse 9, Galatians chapter 3, verse 9. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. That's really talking about the blessing of Abraham. And we have received the blessing of Abraham. And he says in verse 11, But no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, but the just shall live by faith. And in verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. There's been a divine exchange. He took upon himself every curse, every sickness, every pain and disease. Mm. All our poverty, all our lawlessness, all our unrighteousness. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And in verse 14 it says that. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. And I spoke a couple of weeks ago about the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of Abraham that has come upon us. What a promise. What a promise. That we might receive the promise of, of the Spirit through faith. Through faith. And when we talk about the blessing of Abraham. I'm reminded in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we all know the scripture. One of my favorite scriptures as well. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, 28. And we know from verse 1 to 14, it talks about the blessings of Abraham. But it also goes on from verse 15 onwards. And it talks about the curse. In the same chapter of Deuteronomy 28, on the one hand, it talks about the blessing. On the other hand, it talks about the curse. And I've been thinking about this. Because yes, we generally only pray the blessings over our lives. But why would this chapter have both the blessing and the curse? The blessing is there so that we might appropriate it. Because it belongs to us. Yeah. We're the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But the curse has been there. To also remind us that we are of the new covenant. The curse has been there because the Lamb of God was sacrificed for you and I. Amen. So that every curse that's listed from verse 15 onwards has been broken. Come on. Yeah. Oh, what a promise. Hallelujah. Every curse has been broken. That's glorious for Amen. you and I. Amen. That's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. That's the power of the blood of the new covenant. In which you and I are partakers of. That's why it was put in there. So we know and remember 
what Jesus Christ did for you and I. That for me is life changing. It's life changing because I know what he has done for us. I know where he's taken us up the miry clay and brought us into a place that we can be called the beloved of the Lord. We can be called the sons and daughters of the Most High God that we know we're in covenant with him and him with us. And so when we talk about the blessing, about Abraham, I want to go to Genesis chapter 14. And it talks about when Abraham had gone and he had heard that his brother was taken captives and he went with his army to recover all and, 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 and the king of Sedan went out to meet him at the valley of Shabbat after his return from the defeat. And in verse 18 he says, Then now Chesedek, king of Salem, which is Jerusalem, brought out the bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. El Elyon, El Shaddai, Elohim, mm. Yahweh, Yeshua. That's who was. The I am that I am. The Amen. God Most High. Melchizedek. And in verse 19, and he said, he blessed him and said to Abraham, blessed be Abraham of God Most High. Possessor. Mm. Possessor Glory. Glory. of heaven and earth. You and I are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham's name was subsequently changed to Abraham. But you and I are descendants. And if Abraham was a possessor of heaven and earth, yeah. wow, so am I. Amen. Come on. So are you. Amen. Come on. So are you. You just need to appropriate that which is in heaven. According to his word. As I've shared before, his word was settled in heaven. It's a completed work. You just have to receive it by faith. And I receive it that we shall be the possessor of heaven and earth. And it goes on in verse 3. Blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And thereafter, Abraham, as he received that, as he received the bread and wine, as he received the blessing of the Lord from the priest of the God Most High, he gave a tithe of all. He gave a tithe of all. And I heard once somebody says, you know, tithing is not in the, in, in the New Testament. And I don't want to get into some debate with some individual that uh, doesn't believe tithings only of the Old Testament and we shouldn't be tithing, but I don't want to go there. But when you look at the word, the corresponding word in Hebrews chapter 7, speaking from verse 1, For this Melchizedek, the king of Salem, priest of most, of most high God, who met Abraham, here's his name, changed in Hebrew, in Hebrew chapter 7, has been changed to Abraham, no more Abram, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and he blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth of all. Gave a tenth of all. Here's the thing that Abraham knew. That the tithe was a covenant tithe. Come on. The tithe is a covenant tithe. That's right. He gave a tenth of all the spoils. He knew that. And we know that. As your covenant is of vital importance in your relationship, with the Lord Jesus Christ, your covenant with Him and His covenant with you, your covenant of marriage to your spouse, so is the covenant of the tithe. 
So you can't take bits and pieces just to suit you. This is the full gospel. This is the full gospel. And we take it all. And so when I give my tithe on a monthly basis, I know my tithe, the covenant tithe. Because I'm giving to the one who made the covenant. To the Lord Jesus Christ. My tithe is given to him. Even though you bring it to the local church. The word of God says bring your tithe to the local church. To the local storehouse. But it's given unto the Lord. Because it's a covenant tithe. Amen. And it's the same. When I look at that word. That's in Genesis chapter 14. And Hebrews chapter 7. It brings me. To Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from our ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord. Amen. And God says, in what way and so forth. But in verse 10, he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Amen. Bring all the tithe. And then it goes on. To say that there may be food in my house and try me now in this. Mm. Says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it or to contain it. Mm. But this is the promise in verse 11, a greater promise that I will rebuke the devourer. Amen. For your sakes. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. So he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. See we labor with our hands. We labor. And as we labor there are fruits. By the fruits you will know them. And we labor. We don't toil. We labor because he says the bless, he's blessed the work of our hands. Yeah. Amen. We don't toil, we labor. But we produce fruit. But he also promised that he will not destroy the fruit of our labor. The fruit of our ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. Everything that you sow, you shall bear fruit. Yeah. I'm talking about good seed. Yeah. As you give your tithe, sow your offering, it shall bear fruit. Because that's what his word says. Yes. No shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts, the God of the angel armies. Hallelujah. That's what he promised us. Amen. See, in Malachi 3, Israel was neglecting their covenant relationship with God, robbing him of the tithes and offering. And God challenged them. God challenged Israel to counter their neglect by proving his faithfulness in this matter of giving. If Israel would give all the tithes and not hold back, he would open the windows of heaven and rebuke the devourer. That's what he promised for Israel. It's the same promise for you and I. So I want to remind you, your tithe is a covenant tithe. Amen. Giving to a covenant keeping God. And as I continue to meditate on this word covenant and, and preparing, I'm also reminded that the covenant is all inclusive. My covenant of healing, yeah. my covenant of wholeness, my covenant of peace, my covenant of prosperity. It covers every aspect of my life. Because He is Yahweh, He is Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sukkun, Jehovah Mekadish, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sabbat, the Lord of hosts. Friends and family, so my faith is only in the God of the new covenant. Mm -hmm. My faith is only in the God of the new covenant. I'm only going to be focused and looking unto him, the author, the finisher of my faith. 
I have declared and I will continue to declare mm. that He is my only source. Come on. He is my only source. Why? Here's the thing. Well, I can declare that He's my only source. Because whatever belongs to Him belongs to you and I. Because we're in the covenant relationship. And that's what the covenant is about. It's the same in a marriage situation. In a marriage, you come together as one. Yeah. It's not your part and my part. I know the law has different aspects of marriage. But I chose... When I enter that covenant to be one. To be one in every aspect. Including our finances. Including the work that we create. It's all together as one. Because that's what the covenant says. Mm -hmm. And as we look at the word in John chapter 16. Speaking from verse 13. He says... However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Talking about the Holy Spirit. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Wow. Let me repeat that. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine. This is Jesus talking. Mm. And declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. The Father and Jesus are one. Yeah. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said, he will take of mine and declare it to you. Come on. It's actually repeated in verse 14 and 15. Yeah. And when he repeats, when Jesus repeats it, we have to take cognizance. Yes. We have to take and come to attention that he's saying that which is the Father's is also yours. Come on. Because I'm his beloved son. You receive it. You are the apple of his eye. Amen. I am the apple of his eye. You and I are favorites. Amen. Come on. We are favorites. Yes, Lord. And I'm so blessed with that because whatever is His is mine also. Yes, Amen. And this day I choose to take it. I choose to take it. Yeah. I choose to Amen. receive that. The blessing of the Lord. See, God gave him a spirit without measure. All that he has, church, is yours. We have access uninterrupted that's yeah. right uninterrupted access to everything God has uninterrupted access I also like the word in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 22 and picking up from the amplified version and so Jesus has become a certain guarantee the New King James says the word surety yeah. Okay. But I like that word guarantee. Yeah. This is more than a bank guarantee. No Believe me. He owns the cattle in a thousand hills. Amen. See, so Jesus has become the certain guarantee. Mm. I don't need anything else. Amen. I don't need anything else because he's my guarantee. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Of a better covenant. Wow. Yes, Lord. Of a better covenant. A more and excellent advantageous agreement. One that will never be replaced or never be announced. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can never be announced. Not like the world does. Annulling agreements and cancelling agreements. That covenant can never be replaced. Neither can it be announced. Because he has no equal. He has no rival. Have yeah. you seen that song? 
Come on. He has no equal. He has no rival. He yeah. has Lord God Almighty. That's who he is. Hallelujah. There is none like him and no one can compare to him. So friends and family, we speak about and spoke about the black covenant, the new covenant with him. The covenant of, of marriage, covenant of the tithe, and all that's in the covenant. And this morning, you might be hearing me and listen to me, maybe on the audio, or on the Facebook, or on the website, wherever it might be. And you've heard this word and you say to yourself, you know, I really do not know this God of covenant you speak about. Come on. I've been in the place that you've been before, many years ago. And I chose, as I desired, to enter into this new covenant. And the only way you can enter into this new covenant by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I want to give you that opportunity. I want to give you that invitation to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Before we pray, we continue with the service. So wherever you might be this, this morning or evening, whatever time it is, you're receiving this word. It's a simple prayer. And you can pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you this day just as I am. I acknowledge that you came, that you died, and on the third day, you rose again. And this day, I invite you to come into my heart Come into my life and make me a brand new creation. I receive you this day as my Lord and my Savior. I denounce everything of the past and I look to you this day as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you for saving me. I thank you that I'm born again. And I thank you. This is a new day in my life with you. Hallelujah. Friends and family, when I realized that we're in the 2nd of August, it's a time and a Sunday, the first Sunday of the month that we partake of the table of the Lord. And as we come and partake, we partake of this covenant table of the Lord. It's a powerful, it's a powerful time in the presence of the Lord when you and I come and take and partake of this covenant meal. Even as we heard it, Genesis 14 and Hebrews. Now Chesedek brought out the bread and the wine. And this morning, the priests of the house have brought out the bread and the wine. This covenant table that has every promise, that has given us a victory, everything that we require is in this promise. That he broke his body and he shed his blood. That we might receive all, and I mean all of the blessings. All, as I shared with you in John chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. It all belongs to you. Yeah. And I encourage you that even as we partake, we partake together. As you receive this word, receive it and take it now. That you are in covenant with the Most High God. That you can face anything. That nothing is impossible with Him. 
because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think or imagine. Nothing. Because he's a covenant-keeping God. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Be obedient. Be focused. Be steadfast. In seeking him, in seeking his word, in his promises, being faithful to him. And even as we take out the bread and the wine, I encourage you. Be faithful in the covenant of your time. I assure you that the windows of heaven are open. Amen. They're open. Amen. It's a step of faith. They're open. One of the ways you access is by giving your tithes and your offerings. We don't talk about this too much, but I felt in my heart I needed to talk about it from the perspective of the covenant. Mm. Of the covenant. So it's not about money. It's not about the money. It's about the covenant. So Father God, we just thank you. Thank you this morning, Father. We are your sons and your daughters, the beloved of the Lord. Thank you for such a great covenant. Thank you, Lord. That we could be in covenant with you. Yes. Thank you for the shed blood. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of the new covenant. Yes. We're a new creation you, in Christ Jesus. Jesus. We're into a better and a new covenant with Lord, you. Yeah. And Lord, I thank you this day. I thank you because of that. Yes. I can face tomorrow. Yes. And I know you hold the tomorrow. That there will be no fear. I go with confidence knowing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you for the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The blessing of the Lord that has come upon your people. I release that because of the covenant that you have made with your people. The covenant that will never be broken. The covenant that will never be annulled. Oh, glory to you. Thank you, Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory to Thank you. you. Yes. For your goodness and your faithfulness. And yes. That which you've done in our lives transformed us. Thank you. Transformed us. Thank you. We bless you, Lord. We thank you this day for thank your you. people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. And friends and family, this morning. Let's partake together as we come before the table of the Lord. For me, this is a holy moment. This is a moment of reverence because He's a holy God. And I want to encourage you. As a church, we might be doing it once a month, but I want to encourage you. As the word says in 2 Corinthians 11, it says, do it as often as you remember. Do this in remembrance of me as often, as often. And I want to encourage you in this time that we're faced in. We took a decision as a family. We're doing it regularly. Regularly. Week upon week, we take the covenant as a family. We take out the bread and the wine because I know the importance of the broken body and the shed blood for you and I. Hallelujah. What an awesome word we have this morning. This word reminds us, covenant, it reminds us of the faithfulness of our God. And you heard the servant say, it cannot be broken. Beloved, these are the results as we come to take communion this morning. Out of covenant, our Lord and our Savior gave His life upon the cross of Calvary that you and I will be set free. That the blessings will never be compromised any powers of darkness or anything 
because he paid the price in full. We are the ransom of the Lord. We do not stand accused because of the blood of the Lamb. This morning as you get ready to join us in communion, I want you to believe God for your miracle. I want you to believe God for your healing. I want you to believe God for your deliverance. And also this morning, in the midst of this pandemic, this coronavirus, COVID-19, I pray that as we take communion, receive the finished work of Calvary. That by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. And we do this covenant as we take this meal today. It is about faith. And I trust this day you are ready to join with us as we take the communion together. It is written, For I have received of the Lord the night in which he was betrayed into bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat. This is my body which was broken for you. After supper, he took the cup and he said, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat of this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. I want you, beloved, to take your bread. I want you to break it. And I want you to share it with your family right now. And hold it in your hands. And we will take together. And bless this bread. Bless this wine and sanctify it. And declare holy unto our God as we eat of this bread. Thank you today, Jesus. Your body was broken. We might be whole. We remember today. You were broken that we will be complete. You completed the covenant over our lives. Today I stand in the surety of the word the servant of God has spoken of this covenant. And as we eat of this bread, we receive our healing. Receive our blessing and our faith is strengthened in you as you are in us. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us. As I am passing this communion, I'd like you to get this the wine ready, your juice ready in your hands to your family. We can take together. to raise it up so this morning my father I thank you for this precious gift the shed blood of the Lamb chastisement of peace was upon thee and by the stripes were healed and I thank you today we we'll receive as we drink of this as we do it in remembrance of you we remember the covenant and the promises of God that is A and A we we'll receive our healing, the crown of our head to our feet now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We we'll receive the protection through the blood of the Lamb, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We we'll receive our cleansing through the blood of the Lamb, in the 
the mighty name of Jesus. So today, let us pray. Jesus, my name. Beloved, you at home, I'm going to release a blessing upon you together with some of our pastors. I'm trusting God for your miracle right now. I'm trusting God for your deliverance. I believe the servant of God released the word and I believe there's a financial breakthrough coming your way. I believe this day it is in your mind and your heart as your faith increases right now. The curses have been already broken. As you've taken communion, you are free. You have entered into a new covenant. Yes. A covenant with Jesus Christ that sets us free. What was the Father's is Jesus. And what is Jesus becomes ours. We receive that by faith. But right now with the fear of this pandemic, right now, God has brought us through that spot. And he's going to see us to the end. I want you to believe that. And this morning as I pray, I declare... You son and daughter, you will not be a statistic of this pandemic. And those of you who are even sick in your body, I'm going to pray by the stripes of Jesus healing. Yes. And so even as I pray, if there's any of your loved one that has been affected by this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus, I want you to mention their names. And whatever sickness you have, I want you to believe God this morning. Because this morning... We're coming with the understanding, the clarity. It is ours to covenant. You heard the word from the servant of God. It is ours to covenant. And so receive this blessing. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth this day, we release the mighty word of God yes. that is written by the stripes of Jesus. We are here. Yes. We release it. Yes. I prophesy it. Yes. I yes. pronounce it. Yes. I decree it Jesus. now yes. to every son and daughter yes. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. It is written. His word is held to your flesh. Yes. Now, yes. I deposit that word yes. into your body. I rebuke every infirmity. Yes. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Yes. I rebuke every curse. Yes. I rebuke every sickness yes. and vile in your body yes. now. I command it to lose you yes. and let go now yes. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pronounce healing. Be healed yes. in Jesus name. Be made whole now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray the blood. I release the blood upon you right now. The blood protects you against every disease and sickness. From every powers of darkness and calamity. I declare to you. No evil shall befall you. Neither shall any plague come nigh unto your dwelling place. I declare the Lord is a wall of fire above you. I declare under his wing you take refuge this day i thank you right now for a touch of god i thank you for recovery i thank you for restoration i thank you for that healing now in jesus mighty name and i pronounce the word of god with long life he will satisfy you and he will show you his glory this day i speak this word i prophesy again upon you this day you will see the end of your yes, faith yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. And so my father, even as your servant has spoken, open the windows of heaven yes. and pour yes. your blessing yes. and pour your blessing. Yes. Let it rain, yes. let it rain, yes. let it rain. Yes. The blessing yes. of our God upon the church of Jesus yes. Christ. I declare my God, the divine ship of the world. Yes. I declare there's a divine gathering, yes. my God of the world well than to be released upon the church of Jesus Christ. I thank you my God there will be a shifting. I take authority and I rebuke and I bind this COVID-19 over this nation of South Africa and the nations of the world. I command you this day you shall die. Your power die. You will not take life. You will not feel of the light in this nation and the nations of the world. Let the breath of God blow it away in Jesus mighty name. Lord, we sanitize, we sanctify yes. this land. We declare it holy 
before our God in the mighty name of Jesus. And so this morning, I thank you also, Father, for the covenant of peace to be upon each one in your homes through all the frustration and all the worry and all the anxiety. But this morning, I speak peace. Yes. I speak peace. Yes. I speak yes. peace. Yes. The joy of the Lord be your strength right now. I pray the presence of God in your home. Feel the presence. I call it forth now. I pray the mighty presence of God in your home in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you for every miracle. I thank you for every testimony. I thank you for every healing. And I thank you for every soul that has come to the knowledge and the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. We love you, beloved. God bless you. And we will meet again uh, via the website. We'll see you on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. God bless you. Amen.